Hello, buddy fighters out there. This is uh, Levi, Houston Regional Qualifier Champion with my Darkness Dragon World Deep deck profile. Took it there yesterday, Sunday, and actually got first place with it. It was a uh, very, very much Dark Horse deck of the tournament. Really just kind of came out of nowhere, I guess, and uh, stole a lot of games, stole a lot of victories, and looking forward to Nats now, but uh, without ado, get this all out the way so we can start. Uh, obvious already. My buddy was Caster of Forbidden Techniques Felgren. 1 1 1 size 0, I can pay 2 life and call a size 3 for my hand without paying the call cost. Very handy for being able to continuously get your guys out on the field. Uh, size 0, easy to play whenever. Stats are pretty non existent, but that doesn't matter. His main effect is actually being able to keep you able to play all your monsters no matter what situation presents itself, be able to conserve gauge, and be able to control your life too for one of the card of the deck. Super handy. Uh, picked him as the buddy mostly because he's the only four of that like I'm always going to be consistently, consistently calling no matter what. Just, you know, simple, easy buddy. So moving on, the size three is the heart and soul of the deck. Of course, four, Graveyard of Demonic Swords, Graybard. Always the uh, absolute MVP of the day. 727, deep size 3, pay 2 gauge to call him, and when he hits the field, blow up an opponent's monster, and if you successfully blow it up, you deal the damage equal to the size. This wins games, this just, this card is just absolutely ridiculous. So unfair. Makes any, any, any other size 3 deck just crumbles to it. Just burns everything. I was actually, I was burn Novid uh, three times in the entire day successfully burn Nova, people successfully burn Nova to me, and for each burn Nova game, I stalled out until I just drew this and threw it down for game. This card just makes things absolutely unfair. Moving on, we have 400 Demon General Goku Mingayo. This guy is an 826 size 3. His call cost is you got to pay 2 gauge and put 100 demons from your drop zone into his soul, and then if he is in the center, he has double attack, and he has a soul guard. So this guy is a nice big beater with a body that can absorb at least two 6k hits more depending on your defensive spell options. He's very, very, very good. Um, the only downside, of course, being that his call cost, there needs to be 100 demon already in the drop zone. So he, either you either have to have another copy of him in the drop zone or the buddy Velgarin, meaning there's only seven of the targets, not count, obviously not counting the one you're playing. So he can get a really, little awkward sometimes, you know. He can be a dead card sometimes. He can be really hard to play. Although one nice play is that Velgarin here can use the ability to pay to life to call him without the call cost. Now, you won't get the soul for his soul guard, which is very unfortunate, but if you absolutely have to, he can be brought out by those means. So he's not always the deadest of cards. But when he goes off, he's, he very much goes off. He's, he's a very nice he's a very nice body to sit on. He can soak up a lot of things, and he's just a great defensive option for the deck. Moving on, we got three Divine Demon Slayer, Amino Hoabari. This card is great. Two gauge for an 8-2-8 eight, eight with double attack. This guy is just a beast. The opponent usually will be able to hit him more than once per turn, uh, so he can be a giant wall. Any of your defensive spells combo great with him, and he just he soaks up so much. He can be really hard to get around for a lot of decks. He can even wall out a lot of other size three decks because they sometimes just can't hit eight all the time. And he he's just great. There's really nothing lot nothing really more to say about him than he's just a good beater. He can beat over anything and can stall can stall you out so long, buy you a lot of free turns. Lastly, well not so lastly, we have a 1 5th Omni Dragon Lord, Tenbu. 636, size 3, pay 2 gauge to play him, and when he hits the board, nuke your opponent's board of all their monsters. Just a super sacky, great card, just throw out, surprise your opponent with, really steal games, get giant nukes with, plus so hard off of, and then even get a nice 3 crit damage in there. This card's great. Uh, he also works with a lot of the defensive spells, and you can call him for free with Elgarin, which is also nice, because Elgarin is not specified the kind of size 3, it just has to be a size 3. Uh, Tenbu. Not, 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 not much more to say about Tenbu. And then one pretty last minute add into the deck, but really carried me in a lot of things today, was the second Omni Demon Lord, Asmodei. This guy is a 5310 that costs 2 gauge to play, and if he would ever leave the field by any means, you can pay a gauge, pitch two cards from your hand, and keep him on the field. Then he has Soul Guard, no, so Counterattack, Penetrate, and Lifelink, too. This guy is a beast. Uh, like Amino Hoabari here. Your opponent probably cannot hit him more than once per turn because 10k defense is just giant. And he combos so well with a lot of your defensive spells and the, with all the draw power this deck has, you can sometimes actually manage to use that effect and not, you know, 
lose out on so much. Uh, just be, you have to be wary of a lot of destruction effects that are uh, in the game right now. You don't always want to play him. You know, be be very careful the situation you play him in. But in the right situations, this card can just tank games out and absolutely demolish opponents in every which way. And again, can be called for free with Valgrim, which is really handy. So that is all the size threes. Uh, they all put in a bunch of work. These guys are amazing. All absolute MVPs of the day. Props to them all. So moving on, we do play some size twos in the deck because you need to have more plays. You need to have things that are free sometimes to call. That's pretty much the main pur purpose of these guys in the deck. They're also great turn one plays because none of your size threes are really good turn one because they either have like they have the destroy things. You don't want to waste double attacks. And there's nothing, obviously nothing going to be burned. Turn one with Greybard. Uh, only thing is Asmodeb. You really want to play Asmodeb without knowing what your opponents, you know, coming at you with. So these are mostly what you will go and play for on your first turn. We got four Extreme Prisons Winger. This guy is a six-two-six six deep. That when you play him, you mill the top two cards in the deck in a drop zone. Obviously, he's made to work with like that Talika and whatnot. Um, the milling doesn't really serve a lot of purpose in this deck, other than possibly sacking into a hundred demons target for a. Uh, for Goku Mingayo, which does happen sometimes, or sacking into your one count dawn in the deck, which we do play, you'll see later on. Um, well, you're really playing for the mill effect. He's mostly just there to be a good 6 2 6 beater. Uh, there's really not a lot of other great size twos to play as far as good, you know, good stats defensive wise, and his 6 2 6 spread is just really handy and is just a really great monster to throw out turn one. And in a situation where you somehow, you know, don't have gauge to actually play any of your uh, heavy hitters here. He just can, you know, buy you that turn or two to soak up things. And against some weenie decks, he's actually, like, kind of a decent wall with all your defensive spells. So, moving on, we have three more. We have three Death Wizard Dragon. He's a 3-2-3 three, three, size 2 Black Dragon that when you play him, you can... You know, not you can. It's not optional. When you play him, you take one damage, and then you can charge two gauge. This guy is super good. Um... I was... I was really... Something I was... That the deck was always lacking was a good way to... You know, keep constant amounts of gauge acceleration. You know, Velgren is good. Stuff like Devil Stigma is good to keep your gauge up. But this guy, this guy is just that. You know, that great option. Playing him turn one is amazing because then you start the game with five gauge, and you probably don't need any more from that point on from any of your other cards. He can uh, self damage you to drop you into life life break amounts, which is always such an amazing play. And just being able to throw him down to get gauge out of the situation to make your good comeback plays. Because one of the one of the one of the ways this deck really just you know takes games is by letting your opponent overextend and then just making a giant comeback play that you just kind of sit on for the rest of the game. This guy makes sure you always have the resources to pull off those giant plays that you need. I love him, absolute, absolute great card. Moving on to the size zeros, we have of course four of the buddy caster of forbidden techniques, Belgarin. You know, obviously, obvious already went over him. You know, after seeing the size threes, you know his role in the deck is even more obvious and is even better. Uh, then we have, of course, one Count Dawn, uh, 4 one, one Wider Star Call. If he's in the drop zone at the beginning of your turn before draw phase, uh, you can pay one life and revive him. This card is so great. Uh, 4 one, one are amazing stats. I mean, a, re a re revivable Armor Knight Eagle, one life for one card is great, especially if you get him into the drop zone by any other means, via Gage or again the Millie with Zwinger. He is just really really handy you know a free card and there's a great size you're obviously surprised with size three deck you know he's great love him count on and then also we have sh one shooter magic bullets gas bar just a three one two size one i always play six size zeros for the day so i just kind of threw the random gas bar in originally i was playing four and two of uh velgren and gas bar but then count on came out so i just had a but i mean i, I didn't want to take out the one of the gas bar because i like the six size zeros and he didn't come in handy today i i saw him a few times and you know he, he got in there he did his job so that is it for the monsters. Moving on to spells, we have four Black Dragon Shield. Uh, we only cast this if you have no monster in the center, and you would be dealt damage. It's reduced to zero, and you gain life. Um, you know, it's great. It's a, a free chill axe that you need to open center for. It means Black Dragon Shield. You know, not more, much, not much more to say about it. Uh, your guys will get busted down by various means. You always want the best option of a null. You know, so you don't just get absolutely wrecked for damage. You don't want to be too vulnerable, especially in this kind of meta right now where so everything is so, so aggressive. You know, the point of playing this big size three deck like this is so that you can actually stop all the weenie rushes, even the big rushes, and, you know, being able to play a nice, like, tempo stall game with your opponent where you just overcome them by sheer resources and advantage, which is a really great game to play in this time because if you can actually get it off, it, it goes off really well because everything is just trying to rush really hard. But sometimes you do need, you know, obviously answers to the rush. So Black Shield 
is the best option, null-wise. Uh, one last-minute change I made to the deck, like literally night before Sunday, um, the night before Houston Regionals, is I wasn't really comfortable playing only the four nullifies of Black Dragon Shield, so I threw in two Midnight Shadows, uh, Solomon Shield clone, you only cast a turn attack on your opponent's turn. If it's not a link attack, nullify it. Uh, it's handy. People don't really, people never try to play on a link attack thing because you're more likely going to have the black shield. So, uh, Midnight Shadow is just, you know, a, ni a nice thing that's there just just in case. Just to, just to give you that extra null. And it, it did, it, it came in handy a lot today being able to stop, you know, a lot of big, big damage outputs. Uh, in my Raging Spirit matchup, um, my opponent first turned Gang the King to me. And I would have started the game at 5 life had I not had this handed in in Midnight Shadow. So, uh, yeah. Tongue Child. He saves. He saves my bacon. Uh, moving on for, like, your more monster-focused defensive spells. We have 4 Dark Energy. Uh, it's Dark Energy. This is, like, the best spell deck. Uh, when one of your monsters would be destroyed, you can pay 1 gauge to nullify the destruction and give it counterattack for the turn. Like, that's just amazing. Uh, stops, you know, any effect. Destruction of any kind. Stops penetrate, stops just everything. It also gives counterattack for the entire turn. So if you have something like uh, Goku Mingayo with a Soul Guard, and and uh, they attack into your Goku Mingayo and you Dark Energy it, you get the counterattack off. And then if they attack you again and you Soul Guard, you still get to counterattack because you have it for the rest of the turn. That is an amazing play. Um, dark Energy is amazing with all of your size threes, especially amazing with Amino Hoabari because. Um, because they usually can't hit eight twice. Same logic with um, Omni Lord, Asmodei. You know, I mean, it's just it's ridiculously good. The synergy with all your cards is too strong. Uh, I toyed with three for a while, but ultimately I found it was kind of hard on the gauge. But ultimately, I found putting more gauge acceleration into the deck to be able to run four is absolutely worth it. This card is too important, to actually, keeping your size threes alive and keeping your opponent from getting at your life points. So moving on, a couple more defensive spells. We have one, two, three death grips. Not four, only three death grips because there's a lot of stuff in the meta right now that kind of, it's not exactly, you know, the the, the, the lifesaver that it used to be, but it's still a great card. It stops most uh, link attacks on your on your monsters and gets rid of a lot of pesky things. Can, you can lock your opponent out of a lot of plays, lock your opponent out of doing just a lot in general. You know, I mean, counter, pay one, gauge, destroy, size two or less on the, mo on the opponent's field. Not even, not, not even in the opponent's field. Um, a really cheeky play you can actually do with that is if they're trying to go for like heavy penetrate on one of your random monsters in the center, you can death grip your own monster and you won't take the penetrate. So that's kind of cool. Doesn't really ever happen though, but you know, it can. <laughs> death grip, I mean, yeah. It's just, you know, super solid card, obviously. I mean, it's just, you know, the deck's basic uh, basic counter removal of a general kind. You can, it's also nice because it's a defensive option. It's a defensive option that you can play um, without needing any kind of size 3 on board. So if they bust it by any kind of counter means or means in general, you can still defend yourself and your life points, which is great. It stops really annoying things. Uh, I busted emergency launch drums with this today. That was probably um, the best use of it. This also, I mean, it busts Tetsu's Blade Ring Phoenix, anything annoying in Dungeon World, because Dungeon World is actually a pretty hard matchup for this. Um, just It busts a lot of problematic things. As obvious as a basic counter move like that would. Then, lastly, for defensive spells, we play two Bloody Dance. It's a simple Drago energy for a deep monster. Works on all your size threes, barring the Omni Lords, of course, Tim Dune, Asmodai. And uh, Death Wizard Dragon doesn't work on him either, but all your other things are deep. Uh, simple Drago energy. It's a pretty nice defensive option. Only two, though, because most of your other defensive options are better. And if your opponent plays their own Drago energy, well, you know, you're done for the chain. Your dude's dead. Rip in pieces, you. Um, but. It's still in there because it is a really good defensive option, and I like having it in there, especially because uh, a nice play you can do with uh, Goku Mingayo. Goku Mingayo here is uh, if he does have a Soul Guard and your opponent swings into you for anything uh, higher than 9 because his defense is 6, you can cast the Bloody Dance, uh, and even if it won't save you from the attack, you Soul Guard and you still get the counterattack, so you can uh, just bop things for free, which is really handy sometimes, especially for a lot of like double attackers and stuff like that. It's just really great blowing up the center, you know, gets more damage in, that kind of thing. It's a nice defensive option. Then I guess, well, technically, lastly for the defensive options, we have two barbed wires. A uh, generic counter rest an opponent's item. Uh, really great. You know, any deck that's super reliant on items, it uh, just puts in a lot of work against. And if, you know, they're not playing items for some reason, because uh, there's a couple of decks like that, it's really easy to side out. Otherwise, uh, I find main decking 2 is a really good thing because it stops a lot of uh, frightening plays, stuff like Emergency Launch Link plays, obviously Kaiserian, you know, anything in Hero World, really, it can stop. Uh, the Dark Hero item that Shadow Dives you, it can stop. That's one of the best uses for it. Uh, I had to handle that today, or yesterday. Um, you know, it's just barbed wire, not much more to say about it. It's just a, a great defensive card. Uh, 
Uh, some more spells. We have some of your kind of resource generation of the deck. Three Devil Stigma. This is a counter. Well, you oh, you cannot cast it during the final phase. Uh, however relevant that is, uh, you can counter destroy a monster on your field. And if you do, charge two gauge and gain one life. This is great. Uh, it lets you bypass penetrate, which is one of obviously the best things about Devil Stigma because you know you're playing a you're playing a close center deck. You need answers to penetrate because it is all over the place. You know, and you can't just let your opponent get free damage on you. It's awful. You need to be playing answers to penetrate. You need, your deck needs to have answers to penetrate of some kind to actually be able to survive. And Devil Stigma is one of the few ways you can do that. Furthermore, it's the deck's main source of gauge acceleration, aside from Velgrind, who, well, doesn't accelerate gauge, conserves gauge, and uh, Death Wizard Dragon. You know, so in total, you have ten cards that can get you gauge, which is really great. I, I I used to have this at 4, but after putting the Death Wizards in and getting Velgar in, it's okay as a 3 of, it still gets you the gauge, you know, 4 can be a little cloggy sometimes, but 3, 3, you get it when you need it, it, it gets you the gauge you need. The life point is also always welcome, especially in a, you know, a defensive deck, sometimes that 1 life point can really save your bacon, otherwise, you know, bypasses the penetrate and gets you the gauge you need to actually keep your deck running all game, which is super, super, super handy. And then last spells, we have one, two, three, four Abyss Symphony. If you're at six or less life, you can pay one gauge and draw two cards. Um, this spell is amazing. This is the deck's actual, like, resource advantagement. Through cards like Death Wizard and Velgrin, you can control your life really well. Usually, you're going to play a size three on your first turn. I mean, at least if you go second. Otherwise, you probably won't. But um, if you go first, you're probably going to get six life if you just don't stop any of the attacks. Um, and if you're not... The, the best play is, like, Velgarin, pay two life, call a size three. At that point, you're probably at six, and you're probably going to be doing that really soon anyway. So this these are basically nice ones, which is just amazing. It's it's so, so, so good. You know, I mean, just keep, just pop your size three down and then just keep drawing all your defensive options. It's, it's super amazing, you know. Can't say much more about, you know, basic, amazing draw power. And six lifeless, I mean, that, you can use that so naturally, so fast anyway. Like I said, it's basically a nice one in this deck. It, it's just, it's a nice one, uh, which is pretty broken. Um, and then lastly, last card, last two cards in the deck, we have two impacts, Dark Interment over the Grudge. This card is amazing. If you have a size three deep on your field, you can cast it. Pay one life, destroy an opponent's item, and then you can move it into the soul of a monster on your field or into your gauge. That is amazing. You're losing one card and your opponent's losing their item. And then for one life, you either get a gauge or you get to pump up the soul of if you have your good friend Goku Mingayo out. That is one of my favorite plays to do because a two-soul Goku Mingayo is just giant, especially after you just bop your opponent's item and most of their board probably with that giant eight double attack twice. It's so amazing. It's, it's so good. You, there's so much items in the in the format right now, and combined with the barbed wires, you have you have a lot of you have some of the best item hate item hate cards in the game, and it's just so good. This card, I I I I owe so many wins today to over the grudge. Like this card literally just got me there so much. Uh, to every round I was siding more in. It just this card wins games like. Being able to destroy expensive items, really good items, all of Hero World, scary items for, because of their defensive options and offensive options in them. You know, stuff like, you know, Dragon World's big items, you know, continuously using these. You can lock them out of Giga Howling Crushers, lock them out of a lot of their offensive capabilities. Same with Dragonites, their big stuff like Hyperion and Drago Anthem. I, I popped a Hyperion and a Drago Anthem with this today. It was so important. Uh, Dark Heroes, Sneak Judgment, you know, expensive item that's so crucial for their play style and hurts your style so much with a Shadow Dive. Pop it, Kaiserian, pop it. You know, superheroes, any of their stuff, pop it, shut down so many plays, shut down so many offensive options. Card is just absolutely amazing. So uh, that is the deck. Now moving on to my sideboard. Sideboard was so important all tournament. Honestly, I'm I'm glad I thought so hard about the sideboard because I sided every single card. You know, at some point in the day, and everything in here was so important. So so many cards here won me games. I'm so glad that this. That I, that I finally crafted this sideboard to deal with anything and everything I would ever think of. Even made a few last minute changes to it, but I was, I'm was i really happy with how everything turned out. So starting off with the sideboard, we have one Divine Demon Slayer, Amino Hoabari, the fourth one, you know, that's not in the deck. Um, basically, this is just in here, because uh, when you when you fight some stuff, you don't, like, there's, there's, there's a lot of penetrate decks, um, stuff with a lot of destruction. You don't want to be playing, um, you don't want to be playing the second Omni Demon Lord, as would I, in matchups like that. You, uh, you never want to do that. There's a lot of matchups that Oz Asmodei is just not good in. So this is pretty much there to side out against him. And if there's a lot of weenie stuff, it's it's pretty easy to just, you know... Sometimes, you know, 
again, if there's a lack of effect destruction, you can keep Azul in, but sometimes you, you really gotta get him out of there, uh, just so you're not possibly drawing dead cards. So, having the fourth Amino Habari is a great option. I, don't, I, don't, I definitely don't regret putting in. Uh, he went in there some. He went in there twice today, and it was really, really solid. Um, next, we have three death damage. Cast, destroy a monster in your opponent's field. This is really great. Uh, pretty much for the Ancient World matchups, really, you want to side out your death grips anyway, uh, or at least, at least like your item hate. So this just gets in there, you know, just super easy answer to destroy all their big stuff. Uh, carried me through game two in my Radiant Spirit matchup. Would have taken things home if I'd have fought something like El Diablos or whatever. And even against other defensive size three decks like this, you know, there are other decks like the Super Armor Dragon, stuff like that. You can just, you know, slice, rip, rip a lot of stuff up. So important. You know, gotta have at least three in there, I feel. Then we have two more barbed wires to go with the two in the main deck. Uh, when, you're against, when you're up against stuff like Dungeon Knights, uh, any variant of Hero World in existence, stuff like that, you know, you obviously want more barbed wires. There is, I feel like it's really important to have the other two because sometimes you need to pack all of the item hate you can possibly pack. Speaking of more item hate, we're packing two more over the grudge. Again, Dungeon Knights, any Hero World ever, Dragon Knights, anything with expensive weapons that are troublesome to you, you really need to get, get rid of, you know, you can side these in. Usually sometimes I would side out uh, some of my gauge acceleration cards because this can provide more gauge, or just some of my more basic defensive options like Bloody Dance and stuff that wasn't, you know, 100% necessary to the matchup. I would I would side more of these in because this card is so important. You need to be seeing this against a lot of, against a lot of decks. Then we have, uh, I have a third Midnight Shadow in the sideboard. Um, just against stuff that like you might want another Nullify in, just in case. Um, it's really good in the Kaiserian matchup because they'll usually just have like the one attack on your center. You can stop it, you know, get the big 8k Kaiserian attack with the penetrate and all that. You can get rid of that. And I don't know. I it a couple times. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about keeping this in there, but I don't, I don't really, you know, regret it because there's not really a lot of other stuff I would want in there. And then lastly, we have a fourth Death Grip, um, mostly for Dungeon because they have a lot of problematic stuff. Uh, superheroes for... Um, E launch drum, you gotta get rid of that stuff. And then, then you know, just any deck you can really imagine there's really problematic stuff, you know, that you, that you might want a fourth death grip to deal with, you can get in there. Uh, it's less of like, you know, what you would really size this in for, and more of like what you don't want a fourth in the main deck for in case you actually run into other, you know, size three decks like this, or stuff where it's just not that good. You don't want four death grips in the main deck, so the fourth is just sitting on the sideboard, you know, for when it's uh, for when you feel it might be applicable. So, um, yeah, that is the entire deck. Um, this deck, I've, I've been finally crafting this deck for, for months now. I really wanted to I really wanted to, to make a good scene with it. And I think I accomplished that goal uh, decently well, I would suppose. Uh, this deck, it just it's so good in the format right now because it can just stop your opponent's plays so much. It can lock them out of their high aggressive rushes that they rely on and really, you know, force them into corners and just put your opponents in the spots they really do not want to be in. And that's a really good thing for a deck right now. You know, if you can actually close up, turtle out, you know, wall install things to your heart's content, if you can manage to do that with any deck in the format right now, it's really, really beneficial to do something like that. A deck like this performed great. It's also a, an amazing sleeper deck. Like, no one really expected this, you know. No one knew, no one really, like, thought... <laughs> anything like this is coming, you know, the most they thought is when they saw, like, the, you know, the size of the million or whatever they think, Death Talica, and I guess as an answer right now, no, this, there's no Death Talica in here. Death Talica is a fun thing, but I don't think it's actually the, mo it's exactly the most competitive thing you can go for at a time like this, you know, the game right now is just in too fast, too aggressive, you know, you don't have time to try and stall out until you can wombo combo with a Death Talica. It's not worth it. The combo pieces take up too much space in the deck. Death Talica himself takes up too much space in the deck. It's just a little bit of an inconsistent thing to be trying to do, at least in a competitive aspect. I play, I mean, I play, I play Turbo Talica for fun. But aside from that, I wanted to keep this deck away from any kind of Talica wombo combo support pieces because I wanted it to be, you know, a pure, fast, consistent, aggressive, you know, defensive turtle out wall stall beat down deep deck and it really accomplished that goal as uh as you can see i'm super i'm super proud of the deck it performed so well it performed exactly how i wanted it to i'm i i just i honestly you know it doing so well was a really surreal thing and i'm, I'm just glad i could you know represent my favorite world darkness dragon world you know on the map a little bit especially with something like this so yeah that was the deck profile um if you're not interested in the turner report you can uh Vamanos, you know, adios amigo now.
but if you are interested in the tournament report, that'll be coming up just after the cut. But thank you for watching so much, and I'll be seeing you guys later. All right, and we're back, and moving on to the the actual tournament report of me going through the day, fighting the rounds that I fought, and managing to make it all the way to the top. So, right off the bat, round one, I sit down, my opponent turns over Hero World, and I'm like, well, it was fun while it lasted, except it didn't last at all because it was round one, but regardless, you know, I didn't actually say that, but it that's not matter. He turns over Hero World, and it's even Dark Heroes, my, one of my more unfavorable matchups throughout the day. Um, well, not throughout the day because I actually did win this round, but in general, it was a matchup I was afraid of because things like Schwarz bust down your size 3 so easily with that auto destruction, the ability to keep bringing it back, and of course, Copious Mounts of Shadow Dive with the Sneak Judgment and the Gwyn. It was definitely a matchup I was uh, fearing throughout the day, but uh, game one, my, my opponent unfortunately didn't see Schwarz. Well, unfortunately for them, didn't see Schwarz all game and just bricked a lot in general, so they weren't able to actually do a whole lot against me, and I just kind of ran them over. I felt really bad, but, you know, sometimes you just don't draw that one card you need for the matchup. On a game two, uh, he did start getting into some Schwarz, and that was very unfortunate for me, but thankfully I had a lot of... Um, a lot of dark energies, and I had like three of them, and they were able to save me through the few turns of taking crazy amounts of damage, and then I was able to get my own damage in there. He didn't draw any defensive defensive spells the entire game, uh, so he had to kind of uh, turtle up and forego his uh, Schwarz Retro Rush coming at me because uh, my he was just getting beat down by stuff like Amino Hoobari and uh, Goku Mingayo, so he actually brought out the um, the Great Leader Anson and revived his Shores, and that was a pretty, pretty scary turn because I had to use my last Dark Energy, but thankfully I was able to get through it, and, and from that point on, I just, I, I dropped more size threes and just kept beating him down until, you know, he just, just keep, kept beating him down until he died, basically, because he just didn't really have, you know, he didn't have the option to uh, be as aggressive as he needed to be to actually combat me because uh, he wasn't drawing any defensive options, you know, so it was just unfortunate games for him, you know, sided in, a lot of item hate to get rid of Sneak Judgment, did that game one and two, and from the, from then on, things just, things were just kind of easy for me, so round one, you know, my opponent, you know, just didn't draw as well as he could, and I was able to take out Dark Heroes, which was very, very great. Now round two, oh, I feel a lot more bad about this one, round two I fought Raging Spirits. So, um, yeah, Grey Bar just kind of like instant won me that round, um, Game one, uh, he he went first. He played uh, Champion Lord and Ricky. So already he didn't get his double attack, and like he had a nice board setup. But I dropped a uh, a Death Grip on the Ricky. He took Life Link one. Then I dropped a Gray Bar on the Champion Lord, and then he took five. And then I I dropped two more zeros. Rushed him for damage. Our Prudent set kept him from dying, but it was just game from there. He wasn't gonna come out of you know that much damage being thrown at him. A second Gray Bar that I drew throughout the day, took it home and just finished things. Game two, I was able to side in. Um, I was able to side in some death damages. Uh, basically decided out my item hate for those because, you know, Masura is not a very scary thing. Um, sided in death damages. Didn't actually draw uh, Grey Bard until the final turn on game two, but the death damages carried me through. I was actually bricking really hard. Like, the only monster I saw until the last Grey Bard was, like, a Zwinger, which was really, really awkward. But uh, Dark Energies, you know, at least can keep a Zwinger on board. And my de I drew a death damage, like, every turn, so it just it I was able to consistently kill his size threes. And then... I top decked a Grey Bard for game. Uh, if not, I actually already I had plans with a Nomino Hoabari, but it was just more more Grey Bard salt in the wound. So that was a uh, a really easy matchup for me. It's just Rage, Rage Spirits, Ancient World in general, is just one of those very very easy matchups, just because of cards like Grey Bard and Death Damage. You know, just it's a poor matchup for them. Round three, I fought a I fought Quartet Five. Now this was a scary matchup because the Combo Trooper Dizium sitting there with its nine three seven. Or is that a stat? I don't know. But regardless, it's three crit penetrate just sits there and really makes fun of you. Uh, that was scary. It was something I was kind of... Ref and I mean, superheroes in general is a scary thing. Uh, game one went uh, very, very poorly for me. Um, I had to drop a Grey Bar with no target to kill just because it was all I had. And I chucked it into him. And he just so prevailed just to get the counterattack off. And then linked me for seven damage with a spell for game. So, ripped my life. Uh, game two, though... The item hate came in strong in the sideboard. Item hate MVP came in there. Also went in the fourth death grip to handle E launch drum. Uh, he turned. He goes first. Turn one's um, the combo trooper Dizium on me. So then I I drop uh, I drop Grey Bard. Unfortunately with no target, but it's okay because it lives the turn. And then I drop. 
the ever so lovely over the grudge and kill his Dizium. And at that point on, he just kind of has to turtle out from there with very limited resources. He's just kind of dropping weenies. He eventually gets himself back into the Transformer Rampage Sonic, and he has an E-Launch drum play, but I have the Death Grip to answer the E-Launch drum. And aside from that, all he had to play was like his weenies, like Einder and uh, Zwider. So it was nothing too threatening. So I took game two that way. Uh, game three went pretty similarly. Um, my item hate just kept coming in strong. Barbed wires uh, shut down um, one or two e-launch drum plays when I didn't have the death grip. Grudge took over any anything troublesome that I need. Uh, he didn't play the DZM game three probably because he was just scared of committing because of over the grudge. You know, just really uh, really punishes it. And eventually, uh, I just kind of got him to a game state where he just didn't really have a lot to get past me. You know, he was only hitting like you know. 10,000 once per turn with a link attack and my dark energy and death grips were just keeping my boys alive like they always do Eventually he used um, I've come back to take you down to get back into an E launch, but uh, Unfortunately, I had the barbed wire for the turn and then next turn I uh, simply dropped a gray bar on the E launch and burned two for game, you know That's how it goes gray bar just you know got me that burn for game like that and just like that that was round three now round four, one of my more unfavorable times, I fought Armor Knights. Uh, Armor Knights is a very, very hard matchup for the deck because while, yes, they are probably doing nothing but spamming Iblis on you, so like, you know, you just think you win for free with Greybar, uh, but you don't because Iblis, I mean, it's so hard for any defensive deck to fight Armor Knights, you just have to be more offensive than they are, really, and that's not something this deck can do, it's not something the deck can handle. Uh, I did lose this round, um, you know, I mean, as nice as a Greybar and all them is, you know, Iblis will literally just, you know, with... For, for no cost and no nothing on them, no sweat off their back, bust down any wall you have, and their weapons will get in the damage, you know. It's just, it's a very hard matchup for the deck, and it's just not something they can really handle. Uh, game one and two is pretty much what just happened, you know. I had defensive options, I was gray barding, I was Aminohoa barring, I was getting, I mean, I was getting, I was getting fine draws, he just, you know, Iblis, you know, Iblis every turn, uh, you know, every turn it was either Iblis into another Iblis or Armor used to get the Iblis back and there's just nothing I can do about that. Tiger acing into the double weapon attack when I didn't have the barbed wire just messed me up. Uh, even game two after post side of all the, you know, post side of uh, all my lovely item hate didn't do a lot, man, just kept drawing more items and I, I, just, I just couldn't do anything about it, you know. It was just a situation that was too hard for me to really overcome and I, do, I did lose the round four. So I went into round five with renewed vigor and I came up against Dragonine. Now, uh, this was a interesting interesting match. Um, I did win, thankfully, one round five against Dragonine. Um, he didn't see Ozzy, he didn't get Ozzy Tahaka to, into a Cult of Gwana out both games in game one or two, which was very unfortunate for him. Uh, he he mostly had to rely on a lot of, uh, on a lot of just various monsters that were easily taken out by my defensive spell, by Death Grip, Dark Energy, all that. Um, game one, I just pretty much ripped through his resources quickly with stuff like that. Uh, game two, he went into uh, Armor Deity Dynamis twice, which was a, a pretty interesting, um, a pretty interesting choice for the Iron deck. But uh, unfortunately for him, I had a Gray Bard for each of them, so it got me a lot of free damage in there, and I was able to out resource him really easily. And it was, just, it was just, you know, it was a bad matchup for him because I just. I had all the wall power. He couldn't really do anything without getting something like Azitaka, and he just didn't get that out, unfortunately. He also had to go first both games from winning the dice roll, so starting out with that four cards in hand to my seven, it's just, you know, starting out from that losing point just really hurt him a lot, and, you know, it was unfortunate for him. So round six, I go in. I, I'm up against Legend World, like the fairy hero mix. Now, this was kind of a worrisome matchup for me because Caliburn seemed, always seemed like a, uh, a troublesome thing to me. It didn't seem like fun. Um... And having something like Asura Guard to get around Greybard, because obviously Greybard needs to destroy the target to deal the damage. So if they Asura Guard counter with it, you know, you don't get any damage. Your Greybard, you know, bada bing, bada boom, you get nothing, and you like it. Well, you don't at all, actually. But, uh, so game one, game one, uh, went pretty well for me. You know, I got the size threes I needed, you know, I drew ultimately, didn't brick at all, you know, and I was able to wall out against a lot of his stuff, uh, he was main decking Balmungs, which didn't do a lot against anything but Grey Bark, because Grey Bark's a Black Dragon. Um, so he was only really to hit my he was only really able to hit my side three, you know, once per turn. So a Death Grip or a Dark Energy or just Goku and Guy was playing old Soul Guard, just pretty much came in, you know, MVP game one. Game two, uh, it was a little more troublesome. He sided in the Gungnir Spear with the one with the penetrate, and even had the Pridwin to uh, 
to keep himself from ever taking damage from it, which was really troublesome. And I wasn't drawing monsters. I drew one Gribbard all day. That was the only size three. I spent like, I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I started and immediately passed my turn three times because I just didn't draw anything. Uh, I just couldn't get, I just, I, I just simply couldn't get anything. And I just lost all my resources and life too fast because I had no monsters to play. It was just really awful draws on my part. Um, game three, though, came back with some renewed vigor. You know, got my size threes out. You know, Grey Bards, Grey Bards coming in, didn't get hard counter blast for regard. You know, had my item hate in tow for that penetrate spear. Uh, he also didn't get his Pridwin, so he took like three damage on his own off of the damage, off of the Gungnir penetrate spear. So, and I just, you know, I got what I needed. He didn't, he didn't seem to draw many of his nulls if he, you know, if he was playing a huge amount. And I was just able to get through the match, you know, get through the game three really easily. So, we're moving on to round seven. This is the last round of Swiss. And of course, I fought. What I've been dreading all day, Brave Machines, Kaiserion, Cancerion, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I just, I got sacked by Braves. Uh, it was a pretty savage loss in round seven for me. Uh, game one, you know, Kaiserion into uh, double double uh, mini robos. You know, there wasn't a, a single single mini robo. You use Kaiserion, then puts a little shark in it. So he's walling me out from the straight turn. Starting me off at, you know, seven to 11 life from that buddy call. Uh, I had to play a Grey Bard with no target, which was super unfortunate. Um, and then after I played the Grey Bard, I actually I had, I had a, a play I thought was really going to win me the game. I had um, a double over the Grudge, in which I actually successfully destroyed the Kaiserian. So I really thought that was going to um, get me home. But he top decked on the Kaiserian, got the Penetrate one in, and then called the Gun Bells and hit me for eight damage for game. You know, I didn't have, I didn't draw any, I didn't draw the Null by the second turn, and I just got ripped by Braves, so it was, it was, it was, it was bad, um, game two went pretty similarly, you know, I got the item hate sided in, but, and the midnight shadow sided in, but it only really, it only did so much, um, even opening two barbed wires, you know, it, it, it just, it didn't help me over game, because I wasn't able to deal on damage fast enough, again, like, Armor Nice and Kaiser are pretty much the hard matchup for this game, because, for this deck, because you can't really deal them damage fast enough, and they have a lot of, you know, penetrate, a lot of just, it's so easy for them to bust your stuff, and the, uh, so many of their cards just aren't flat out aren't good against them, and it's just, it's just a hard matchup. Uh, and I unfortunately, you know, lost to just the giant uh, eight damage, you know, turn by uh, Kazarian. You know, just couldn't get through it. Didn't have enough defense to stop it. Didn't have enough offense to get through him. Simple as that. So I lost round seven. So I'm, I'm five two right now after all the Swiss. But thank you. The, the two people I lost to after doing some math were. Uh, the Armor Knight player who had been undefeated up to, uh, through all seven rounds of Swiss, and the Kaiserian player who was 6-1. So thankfully, that those two only losing to the two best people kept me from kept me from uh, not making it to top eight. So I made it to top eight, very excited. You know, sat down, uh, did my deck check. You know, hung out with the judges and all that, and it was uh, a great time. So, you know, hype mode, full in swing, going into uh, round eight, or well, technically my my top eight round. Starting off, my opponent is across me, and it's a uh, friendly neighborhood armor knight player again. The one I lost to in a uh, round four. So I was ready to, I was ready, to, you know, rip my life. Was ready to, uh, for him to tear me up from there. So game one, game one um, actually goes okay for me. He doesn't get as much Ibla spam as he needs to bust through all my defensive options, and I'm able to draw over. The, I'm, able, I'm able to draw over the grudge for a clutch item destroy play. Wall him out for a turn or two, and just strip simply win from the resource game from there. Uh, game two again got my item hate side in. You know, ready to take him on, and uh, I was able to drown him for a lot of resources. But unfortunately, a very random uh, champion wrestler Asmodee walled me out for a turn or two. I have a gray bard in hand, sitting waiting for game, uh, waiting to drop it for game on his three life. But unfortunately, he swings to Asmodee, and I go to null it because I'm three life, and he spell nulls me, and I went for, and I lose from that on game two. So you know, spell null cheese. You know, it got me in good like it did in uh, round three, game one of superheroes. But like in round three of superheroes, I didn't let it deter me because I went into game three, ready to mess him up. And he, uh, unfortunately for the first three or four turns of the game, he doesn't draw Iblis. Uh, so he's just kind of trying to stave me off with uh, small weenies, which obviously aren't doing anything to my big butt size threes. You know, it was a very easy wall game. By the time he does get Iblis and, you know, his constant Iblis train going, I had amassed too much resources. He was at too much, li he was at too little of life. And I was able to just simply win the game from there. Or so I thought until a random burn nova drops me at the end of game three, and then this is just terrifying because I mean I just got burned over. 
Thankfully, though, I'm able to live the turn and end up dropping Handy Dandy Gray Bard for a game on the Burn Nova. So that was great. I managed to actually win my top eight round, and then I moved on. I move on to fight uh, the new friend I made, Maverick, who is playing Dragon Knights for the top four game. So this was an interesting matchup. I had never uh, hadn't, hadn't had a lot of experience with dealing with Dragon Knights with this deck, but uh, game one pretty much went... Uh, he goes into Drago, Drago Anthem, the Twin Swords, uh, to try to try and get multiple link attacks off of me. Uh, but he doesn't really get a lot of Egomotos. I'm not sure if he ran them at all to auto destroy my stuff. And it was just kind of easy to wall him out. You know, he didn't have a lot of experience with any of my cards either, which honestly not a lot of people did today, which really probably stole me a lot of games. Uh, but he didn't really know what he was up against as much as I did. Uh, he wasn't running. He wasn't um, running Dragonic Loops to try and get around Graybard's destruction and damage. So it was just a bit of a losing game for him. Uh, game two went similarly. I uh, I got my item hit in over the grudged. Oh yeah, I over the grudged the Drago Anthem game one, which pretty much won me from there because he was only able to hit me once per turn, if at all. Even drawing, he he relied on a glorious legacy to try to draw him out of it, but he didn't draw any shields, and I hit him for a game from there. Anyway, game two, uh, early on, I grudge his Hyperion. Same same thing the turn after he plays it, like with the Drago Anthem game one. And it's, simple, it's, a, it's a simple wall game from there until, yet again, at the end of game two, random Burn Nova drops on me. And it, it, I, I, have to let the, I have to let the Burn Nova live for a turn. Um, like, he gets dropped, he swings at me, and he puts me from nine to, uh, to five after he busts down my center. Because I had a Gokumungayo, a Gokumungayo with a uh, soul sitting in the center, so he busts me from nine to six. And then I pay a life for Count Dawn, so I'm at five, and uh, I draw. I have a gray bard in hand, but I have uh, no gauge, which is the unfortunate part. I wasn't ready for the burn nova, um, so I have a gray bard in hand and no gauge. So I go to charge, and I actually top deck into a black dragon shield. So I'm able to stave off the burn nova assault, and then next turn charge and draw, and then drop the gray bard for game on his burn nova. Man, even had uh, a shield in hand, but unfortunately the the gray bard burn damage does not play around with shields like that boy. So that one, my Gray Bard took home my top four game. So I have to deal with two Burn Novas in top four and top eight. I mean, I'm in the final round now. I'm already going to, to the to the next stage of things no matter what. So I'm just very excited to play at this point. So I sit down for um for the round ten, the top two round. The spotlight is on. The pressure the pressure is on playing a you know basically multi hundred dollar game of cards here. Um, and I sit down and it is uh it is bread and butter superheroes. So that's a thing. Um, pretty much your typical uh, uh, final mode, emergency launch, drum, you know, uh, beat down build that just kind of tries to mess you up. Thankfully, I was playing a lot of item hate, so I was, I was, uh, a lot of the item hate was pretty much able to carry me through the rounds. Um, game one, game one went pretty normal. Um, he goes into final mode, which was uh, really strong and would have been very devastating to me had I not opened with a size three and my handy dandy over the grudge to bust it really fast, bust his big two gauge investment, and then just kind of uh, turtle out the game from there. A lucky death grip on an e launch play, even after transforming into a rampage Sonic, pretty much kept him from doing anything else. And it was just uh, a bread and butter stall game from there until he ran out of nulls. Didn't ever, he wasn't ever able to uh, just soul prevail, counter attack my size three, kill it for free, um, and then get damage at me. He was never able to get a lot of damage at me, and it was actually a kind of easy game. So, game two, obviously, you know. The weapon hate sides go in, the death grip goes in because he launched drums, screw that guy. Uh, all that goes in, and I unfortunately, he starts off with final mode, uh, same as last time, and I'm unfortunately forced, because I have no other monster to play, I'm forced to go into Omnilord Asmodei. And it, 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 it does, it, it, it holds its own for a couple turns, even, after, even against final mode, because he whips on the effect twice, but eventually he gets the effect off, busts my, my Omni Asmodei, and gets me in for... Um, for a lot of damage, and I'm still I just still don't have a lot of defensive options, especially after having to asthma die once, and I just wasn't able to sustain a good center from there, and I unfortunately lost that game through damage. Although I did make a crucial misplay when he when he went to when when he finally succeeded on um, the answer question to bust my my asthma die, he actually didn't have any other monsters to play. So if I'd have used asthma effect to keep him alive by by pitching two cards, I, he actually would have lived the turn. But well, unfortunately, I didn't do that. Uh, I, I didn't do that. I didn't. Th I didn't. I had no way of knowing he had no other monsters. But if I if I would have known, I probably would have won that round. But unfortunately, I didn't. So we came back in game three. Uh, side still the same. Got a little item hate in. Now uh, 
I go first, you know, plop down like my boy uh, Zwinger. Where is he? Um, I don't know how relevant it is to show him. But I pop down my boy Zwinger for a solid first turn play. You know, he gets in there for that two damage, and I'm feeling uh, decently all right. So my opponent comes back at me with uh, a Rampage Sonic, uh, a Rampage Sonic, a, a ra a Rampage Sonic ride, a Rampage Sonic on the right, and a, uh, I want to say a Project Gunner on the left. So he's just obviously going for face at this point because he feels like that's the best way to handle my defensive deck. Um, so he he goes and he he busts uh, he, uh, he busts through my, he busts through my center and then he goes uh, he gets me down to three life because I try to midnight shadow his three crit swing and he actually spell nulls it which was. Uh, Honestly, probably a misplay that cost him the round if he'd have kept that spell null for a more crucial defensive spell, such as a uh, dark energy or death grip or anything like that. He might have even won the game, but you know, I feel like that might have been a small misplay on his part. But I can I can definitely understand the logic he was going for with um with the spell null because he was just trying to get as much damage as he could in. So my hand's pretty awful. Like I have no size three, no defensive options or anything to actually come back at with with him to come back at with him. So, but I go into a very nice Abyss Symphony, which pays me a gauge, gets me 100 demon in the drop, and I draw into my boy Goku and Gaio, and uh, over the grudge, and I have a Dark Energy in my hand. So, I go Buddy Call Velgren, then I get another zero out, then I go into Goku, get my soul in, then I swing at him for a huge amount of damage, and also simultaneously wipe his board, then I grudge his weapon, get that soul in, and then I'm sitting with a dark energy in hand, and it's a it's a beautiful wall game from there. You know, he has no gauge and only one card in hand because he used all his resources to get me that damage in and to establish that board. And I was able to just you know punish his overextension at me and wipe him everything he had. And it was a simple wall game from there. He got into another transform and an emergency launch drum uh, finally, but unfortunately for him, the death grip stopped that play cold. And he just was not able to win from there. It was just a battle of cards, and I had too much advantage over him and too much defense over him for him to actually able to ever try and actually touch my life points. And I just ended up, you know, keeping size threes on board, and I ended up going with a, actually with um, a Count Dawn. Count Dawn hit him for that last one damage on the final turn and uh, won me the Future Card Buddy Fight Houston Regional Qualifiers. So that is my tournament report. I'm so happy with how this deck performed. I I, I got a lot of attention. I got a lot of praise. I mean, Dark Dark Dragon World top in is not you know, is not the most heard of thing. Especially some you know this really kind of like not necessarily oddball deep deck, but a very you know non typical non standard deep deck that, again, I mean a lot a lot of my success today I can attribute to my I can contribute to um, the fact that I have been researching you know the meta, researching every deck in the game, and literally just planning and crafting this deck to combat it absolutely perfectly in every way that I possibly could, even down to my sideboard, you know, every last card was useful, I knew every play to make, and knew every play to not make, you know, everything was very thought, you know, thought intensive, thought heavy, and all of that, all of that study and work really paid off at the end of the day, because it got me and my deep deck to the champion level, and I can't wait to go to, um, to go to, to go to the next stage, and, you know, get my cool asthma eye, because, you know, swag, uh, Anyway, that's my turn report. If you sat through all this, actually, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing today. It was very stressful, very intense, but I enjoyed it nonetheless, and I hope you enjoyed checking out this report. And, you know, hey, make our Shire World great again. Peace out, fam.